What's going on guys? Welcome to the third or fourth? Yeah, day three. Day three. The, it's going to be the fourth stream, but later today, but this is the third draft recap. Okay, so this is a draft recap of day three of play-ins. Um, yeah, so let's start things off with the best draft of the day. I think this was probably the best draft from Mad Lions. You can see they ended up with a very synergistic comp where they have uh, Hecarim, Seraphine, Nar. I really don't like the Alistair. I'll talk about that in a minute. And they have the swing. So <clears throat> first off, why do I think this was the best draft? Um, I think it was, especially early in the draft before the second round, I think it was like the best. I think it was the draft where a team won but the other team wasn't drafting terribly. So like the Hecarim on B1, I really like. Um, I have been saying on my stream a lot that I think the best R1, R2 right now is probably Misfortune, Maokai, assuming Caitlyn is banned. Um, and like maybe assuming Aatrox is banned as well because people don't play the Aatrox counters. Uh, but Misfortune, Maokai, R1, R2 is really good. Um, Seraphine picked up on B2 with the Hecarim is again really good. Picking up Gnar is okay. Uh, it fits decently well in this comp. Um, and then obviously you have armor on the team, so that's something to consider as well. And then Amumu picked up on red side, again really good, like really thematic with what they already have. So, so far it's great drafting from both teams. They then ban the Aurelia to cover the hardest matchup for the Gnar. Um, banning Leona and Nautilus, I think there are much better supports for Mad. I think they could look at things like... Um, they could look at Morg, they could look at even Braum, uh, Renata, I think Soraka would be really good here. Um, those are all options. Even Senna with the Seraphine in bot lane would be a lot better than what they end up picking, which is the Alistair. I really don't like the Alistair pick here. But then the Swain pick is absolutely godly here because everything is running at him and that is exactly when you want to pick Swain. And also they're relatively low damage. So low damage comp where everything runs at you, Swain angle, 100%. Great pickup from Mad. The only problem with it is that it's open to being countered on R5, but they just pick Galio into it anyway, and that's like the biggest blunder of the draft, I think, is picking the Galio into the Swain here. I get that they want to go for the Galio Camille combo, but it's just not like you're drafting right into Mad's theme there. But overall, really good draft from Mad, and I'm really happy with uh, what they went with, and they played the draft out pretty well as well, so that was nice to see. Um, this is not the last you'll see of this Mad game though. Mad will return later in the video. On to the worst draft, of course, it's going to be Isarus against RNG. Now, I've seen people saying that, oh, Teemo is a challenge Q answer to the Aatrox. It's not. It's an Aatrox favoured matchup. If you understand how Aatrox into ranged champions works, Teemo does not have the tools to deal with Aatrox. He will win level 1, 2, 3. Level 4 onwards, Aatrox will smash the matchup. Like, it's not even close. Um, but aside from that, the draft is even worse, okay? So, first off, I think Graves is just way better than Lil uh, Lilia, so your jungle matchup's losing. Um, next, you're playing uh, MF Nought into Kaisa's set. I mean, I think that's relatively even in bot lane. Like, it's not really a winning lane for you. And then your solo lanes are completely fucked. And here's why. So if RNG were smart, because I know this is something RNG are capable of as well because of 2021 and the fact that Xiaohu played Syndra top, they would just put Aatrox mid into Scion, completely unplayable lane for Scion, and Syndra top into Teemo, completely unplayable lane for Teemo. And then the worst part is that Isarus draft fucking Scion mid when the enemy has a set. So your infinite scaling passive farm mid lane champ is just scaling their sets ult damage anyway. You have like three squishy champions, especially the MF and Teemo, who can just get deleted by Settle if he ults Scion here. It's so dumb for them to pick Scion. Uh, but yeah, even if RNG don't flex the lanes, it's still hard losing. But if I think if RNG flex the lanes, the game is legit not playable for Isaurus. This draft is awful. Like, the only good thing they have going for them is MF Lilia. That's something that people aren't playing enough, and that, that's a good way to start the draft. The MF Lilia 1-2, I actually like, because Lilia can put people to sleep, and MF can channel her entire ult, and it doesn't break the sleep. Because it's, um... Uh, what's the word? It's classed as periodic damage, rather than, like, direct damage, so it doesn't actually break Lilia sleep. But outside of that, the, ref the rest of the draft is garbage. So that's the worst draft of the day. Um, right. 
On to itemization. So I said that Mad would come back. So here we're moving into worst itemization of the day, right? This is uh, Mad Kaiser playing Alistair. If you look at his items, you'll see that he has Even Shroud. One, Even Shroud is a dog shit item. I think the only champion in the game you should be building Even Shroud on is a Mumu because he applies it to everybody with, with his ult. That's it. Like, debatably rel. But I think realistically, it should only be a Mumu, right? Outside of that, the enemy team comp is entirely diving on you on your entire team and all you have to do is survive their dive and then you win by default so if you just go lock it here you apply the shield to your entire team you go lock it first redemption second you redemption on top of your team when they dive you lock it shield your team when they dive you're giving them free armor and magic resist like lock it is a thousand times better than even shroud here like it's not debatable at all so yeah i think this itemization is terrible from kaiser um Onto the best itemization, I just wanted to give like a shout out to Inspired Hecarim for actually building Hecarim correctly. Uh, he's going for the Trinity Force build, of course. It's much better than all these weird tank and anti-heal and whatever the fuck we've been seeing builds. Even the Blunderer build is not as good as the Triforce build. Uh, into the double uh, mage carry on the enemy comp, he bought um, Force of Nature second. I think that's fine. Uh, he's going into Death Stance third. I'm almost certain based on the items. I think they ended very shortly after this screenshot. But yeah, Death Stance third would be probably the best item he can go for here. So yeah, Inspired's building very well on Hecarim here. Okay, that wraps up itemization. Let's move into the general meta read at the tournament. So there's not been a great deal of change. Um, obviously, I still think Alistair is being picked for no reason. And this champ is awful. Um, there's another champion that I think has been really bad, especially in the angles people are picking it, uh, that I failed to mention last week, or last week, yesterday, uh, and that was Kennen. Um, Kennen has been absolutely dog shit. The champion does no damage compared to what it used to do. Uh, it doesn't win lane in the angles that people are picking it. They're picking it into Aatrox. It only wins until level 5, if the Aatrox is good. And then if the Aatrox is bad, it loses as soon as he gets Merc Treads anyway. And then it's an Aatrox favored matchup. So I don't understand why people are using Kennen as the Aatrox answer. Like they need to start playing things like Aurelia. I know it's harder to pilot than Kennen, but it really, really, really stomps the Aatrox matchup. Uh, I know Nile for one, that's the champion he bans. Uh, the challenger EUS Aatrox one trick because he thinks the matchup is completely unplayable for Aatrox. So yeah. Um, other than that, things that sucked. I mean, it would be remiss of me to not mention Timo, obviously. Uh, especially in the angle that it was picked. I, I think there are angles where Teemo can be okay. That was not one of them. Uh, and Garen. Again, I think Garen's just a bad champion. I, I don't think there's really angles where Garen can be picked. The only time it can really be picked is Garen Yumi bot if you're doing like full damage Yumi with first strike and Ludens, but I don't think that's strong enough to be played right now. Um, on to things that are looking good. Um, Zaya Rakan. Both of these champions I can mention at the same time. I mean, Rakan is looking just better than the other engaged supports like Alistair, Leona, Nautilus that people are playing. I think he's just a better version of them. I don't think he's as good as Amumu, uh, which is the other champion that I have for what's looking good. I think Amumu is the premier engaged support and he's looking leagues above every other engaged support in the game. So if you want an engaged support, you should be putting big priority on Amumu. Um, I think Maokai is the other one. You can flex it into support, and that's fine. Uh, but Rakan is like a close third. And then Zaya, as a answer to engage comps, has been looking very good. Um, as for what's missing, I'm not going to put them up on screen. I'm just going to direct you to my video from yesterday, the day two recap. Uh, I think the exact same picks are missing from what I said in the last video. So, yeah, that's my recap for day three. And um, I'm looking forward to streaming day four later. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you later. Goodbye. Hello again, guys. I'm slapping this on the end of the video because I forgot to do Winners Club and Losers Club. So for today in the Winners Club, there's RNG. They didn't necessarily draft well, but you don't need to to end up in the Winners Club. You just need to win draft. And uh, both the teams they drafted against entered against them with Gara and Timo, Sion, you know. Uh, you also have Beyond Gaming in the Winners Club today. Uh, DRX remain in the Winners Club and EG once again in the Winners Club. Decent drafting coming out from EG the past couple of days. Uh, meanwhile, in the Losers Club, we have Isarus, of course, um, Istanbul Wildcats, uh, we have Chiefs, and we have Detonation Focus Me. So yeah, that's the Winners and Losers Clubs for Day 3, and uh, once again, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. See you!